Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, welcome, bienvenue tout le monde. Hallelujah, welcome to all of us. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. We're going to begin to, we're almost late, but we thank God. Amen. We're praying for workers. Pray that God will bring workers in his house. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, those that will be willing to do the work of God, willing from the heart. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's open our mouth and pray. Pray and pray for someone that you have invited. Pray for the members, hallelujah, because you know to come to the house of God late is not good. Normally we have to come 30 minutes, one hour and pray for the service before the service began. So we have to begin to pray for our brothers and sisters. Pray against the spirit of late coming. Pray against the spirit of negligence. You know, negligence in the heart of God. Let us pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We worship you this morning, O oh Lord. We thank you for what you are doing in our life. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We acknowledge your presence in this place. We acknowledge your presence in our life. So therefore, Holy Spirit, we began to pray for our brothers and sisters. We began to pray for those that are still on their way. We pray for those that have not yet made up their mind to come into the presence of God today. Lord, we pray that Holy Spirit, you will, you will quicken their spirit to go to the nearest church in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray. We commit all oh Lord, oh my God, our brothers and sisters, those that are still on their way. Father, hasten their footstep. Hasten their footstep to come into the presence of God. Hasten their footstep, oh Lord, so that together we we'll come and rejoice. Together, Amen. oh Lord, we we'll come and be grateful. Together, we we'll worship you, adore you oh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and pray for yourself. The Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my understanding. Through all this service, let me receive from you. Let me, be, let me pay attention because the Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, the Bible says from verse 1, says, my son, pay attention. Pay attention into my word. Pay attention. Let us pray that today we're going to pay attention. We hear too much, but we don't do nothing. We hear the word of God. We hear a lot of things. We hear preachers. Hallelujah. That is God, but we don't do nothing. But today we pray that our life will not be the same anymore. We pray that the Holy Holy Spirit will open our spiritual ears. We open our spiritual understanding. We give us the knowledge to understand this word this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, open your mind and pray for open my eyes. Open my understanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, I come into your presence this morning. Holy Spirit, I come with all my heart. I come with all my mind. I come with all my soul. I pray that you will use me today in the mighty name of Jesus. Use my brother. Use my sisters. Open our understanding. Let us pay attention. Pay attention into your word today in the mighty name of Jesus. We cast away, we cast out our anxiety, depression here, oh Lord, as we come into your presence, oh Lord, oh Father, we bring all our burden unto you. We bring, say, come unto me, all you that are heavy and weary laden, and give me your burden, and I will give you rest. That's why the Jesus Christ says, come all, oh, come unto me. We are coming unto you this morning, Lord. We are coming unto you with all our burden, our anxiety, our depression, our worries. This morning, oh Lord, we are bringing them to your feet. We are bringing them to your feet. You are the one that will take care of us totally. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Glory. When you open your mouth to pray, the Holy Spirit is there. The Holy Spirit is here already before we come. The Holy Spirit was so no person can ever be any than the Holy Spirit. Nobody. No one needs this why that the Holy Spirit is the one that guides us. He's the one that is always present. He's present in this place. So therefore, let's pray for the service of today. Let's pray, hallelujah, for each and every instrument that God is going to use in this form today. For the praise and worship team, let's pray, hallelujah, that the Lord, amen. The the, the exaltation as we come into the presence of God is our holy communion, our healing service. As we come, there, the Bible says in Peter that be that holy, for I am holy. As we come into the presence of God, we come with a holy heart, we come with a heart of reception. So let us pray, hallelujah, that this day, today, the Lord will do a different thing. Listen, He said, I will do a new thing in the book of Isaiah. For He said, Today I'm doing a new thing, hallelujah. God doesn't repeat Himself, He's doing new things every day in our life. Maybe you cannot see it. Maybe you can't 
can perceive it. But today, guarantee, I want to guarantee you that God is doing a new thing every day. Every day. Every day. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and pray that Lord do a new thing. As I listen to the voices that we sing, as I listen to the praise and worship, as I listen, oh my God, oh Father, to the exhortation, as I listen to the preaching, Father, do a new thing. Any sickness, any disease that has been staying, that mountain, hallelujah, that it has been staying in my body. Today, let it move. Jesus said, just speak to the mountain. In the book of Mark chapter 11, verse 21, he said, speak, 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 just speak to that mountain, and the mountain will go. The mountain will move away. Hallelujah. Today, Lord, every mountain that has been standing in our way, mountain of disobedience, mountain of negligence, mountain of, oh my God, negativity, that mountain today will go away. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, as we take the Holy Communion, hallelujah, transform our life. Give us a new heart. Give us a new heart, a new spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Father, we bless you. Father, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. We worship you. We adore you, O oh Lord. We adore you, O oh Lord. I will worship you. Lift you above the world And I will praise your name. Hallelujah. We worship God. We worship him. Beloved, when we come into the house of God every Sunday, we have to come with empty. We have to empty ourselves. We have to come that with that vessel that is empty. Jesus Christ said you cannot put a new wine in, a, in an old bottle. It means that we, we have to empty ourselves to receive that new wine. He said you cannot, you cannot make a new cloth with an old cloth. This is not the God of the, the it's not, it's, it can't work. So we have to empty ourselves so that we can receive from the Lord today. We can receive from the Lord. Our life doesn't change because we don't empty ourselves. We come with the same thing and we go back with the same thing. But today I want to encourage us that Lord, I empty myself. Surrender yourself. Ask for forgiveness. That Lord, even though I've been negligent to come to your presence, but today I want to start a new beginning. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and say, Lord, for Forgive me. Forgive me. I surrender myself to you today. I surrender. Totally surrender. I totally surrender. I empty myself to come and re to re re rekindle my spirit. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. The whole Lord, we have come to renew our strength. They shall mount on the eagle. They shall never be faint. They will not be weary. So today we have come to renew our strength. We have come to mount on the eagle. We have come to have a new a new grace, a divine grace, a divine favor. Let this day be a new day, beloved. Hallelujah. Don't look at your left. Don't look at your right. Don't look at someone that has not come today. Look at yourself. That Lord, I want to have a special, a special encounter with you today. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's all about you. It's not about your neighbor. It's not about your husband. It's not about your wife or your child. It's about you. Because Jesus is coming on it. He said, I will ask you, not them, you. Hallelujah. You will ask me, what have you done with the life that I've given you? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Say, Lord, I don't want to be negligent in your presence today. I don't want to be negligent. I don't want to be negligent. Father, Lord, I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be complacent. He said, woe unto those that are complacent in Zion. Woe unto those that are complacent, that are happy in Zion, that are just sitting lukewarm in Zion. He said, woe unto those people. But I don't want to be in that category. In the name of, speak, speak, speak to your spirit. Speak to yourself. Say, Lord, I don't want to be lukewarm. I don't want to be lukewarm. I need a new spirit. I need a new mind. I need a new understanding. He said, renew your mind every day. In the name of Jesus, I've come to renew my mind. I've come to renew my strength. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, when we come to the house of God, beloved, one thing we don't understand is that anything we do in the house of God, we need to do it in the spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Even an usher need to be in the prayer mood. Even a, a drummer need to be in the prayer mood. So that the power of God will flow. Even the pianist need to be a prayerful person. Hallelujah. So we don't just come to the heart of God as if we are going to pop. No. We don't come to the heart of God as if we are going to the cinema. No. We come to the heart of God expecting God to do something through us. Hallelujah. Pray that something will happen through you in the name of Jesus. Something new will happen through you today. Let this service be a different service, beloved. Let this service be a different service in our life. In the mighty 
mighty name of Jesus. As brother, uh, as our son, Zito Bisadi and Nire and Ereketa will be singing. Let it not be as a usual person that we know. Oh, I know, I know them. Oh, they work and they sing. No, we can't receive with that kind of mind. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, as they sing, oh Lord, I want to be transformed. I want to be here. You can receive your healing through only that singing. You can receive your deliverance only by praise and worship. You can receive it only by exhortation. You can receive it just that one word. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Then I want to receive my healing. I want to receive my healing. Today, let, oh Lord, let your healing flow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Welcome, welcome to the presence of the Lord. Amen. amen. Say, this is the day, this is the day that, the Lord has made that the Lord has made for me to be glad, to be glad. and be rejoiced. Rejoice. Amen. Amen. Yes, we have to confess with our mouth and believe in our heart. Today is the end of the month service, which is special. Hmm? Amen. Very, very special. Amen. We are welcoming all our viewers, all those that are watching, all those that are virtual. Hallelujah. Amen. We are actual and virtual. Amen. <laughs> so we thank God for His presence in our midst. So we're going to go on to... We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord. And after the worship and praise. Amen. Amen. So without much ado, I'm going to invite the worship team. Please. We are already very, very ahead of time. Yes. Late, 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 late behind. I wanted to say behind of time. So be mindful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You are welcome all today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is a new day and a new Sunday for us to worship the Lord with all our hearts, with joy in our gladness, because He has led us through from morning to this day. And He has led us through throughout this month, and this is the last Sunday of the month. And we are here to take our Holy Communion. Because of what the Lord has done in our life. And with the joy in our heart, and with the fellowship we are going to have, we are going to worship the Lord in truth and in spirit. Amen. Let us turn our hearts to heaven as we worship the Almighty. Because He deserves our worship. Mm -hmm. And He deserves our praise. He is God. He made the way and our battles were against the world. And it looked as if it was over. Lord, make the, the way. And that is why we are still standing here. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have come to worship Him. Because God always made the way for us. Amen. Amen. I was standing on living grass. You man, I was. Yeah. 
walking around this world. I thought by now they will fall. But you have never found me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands, Lord. This is my confidence. You have never found me yet. And you can never fail. Because you are a faithful God.
we got exhortation and then we got our communion. And then we got the message. Amen? Amen. Amen. Blessed are those who diligently seek him. Amen. Please, Victor, read Luke chapter 2, verse 49 for me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, son. Thank you, I uh, can see my son from Australia. Hallelujah. Amen. You are blessed and highly favored. This is uh, Papa's birthday, so you can't miss it. <laughs> yes, it's a special day. And welcome, welcome to our brother Mark. Uh, he spent some time in the mountain. So, I hope you receive revelation that you're going to unveil it to us when you come. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. And all our viewers, we give you, we give God the praise. We give God the praise. Thank you for those that are here. Thank you for those that are faithful into the hearts of God. Look after 2 verse 49. This is a time of exaltation. It reads. Listen. But why did you need to search? He asked. Didn't you know that I must be in my father's house? Hallelujah. Amen. This is Jesus speaking, beloved. Speaking to those that were looking for him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I need some volume in this microphone. I think your friends and family, some may be looking at you. They are asking, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? But Jesus asks them, why are you looking for me? Don't you know that, thank you. Don't you know that I have to be in the house of my father? Amen. I want to talk about dream. Dream. Not the one that you go to bed last night and then you get up this morning and you don't even know. You, one thing you know is just a dream. But what do you dream of? You don't know. But pastor, it was too scary. The only thing you know, they were pursuing you. That is not dream. Amen? Amen. Amen. I want to talk about goal. A goal that you can even print it and put in, that you can visualize, that you can explain, that you can describe. That's what we call dream. A dream is a goal that someone wants to achieve. We are where we are because we have no goal. We have no dream. The Bible said Jacob dreamt that he would be Elevated. Joseph. Joseph, yes. That many will come and bow before him. It did not take his eyes of that vision. Why do I know that he did not take his eyes of it? Because many things try to discourage him. Starting from his family, from his brothers and sisters. And when he went to Potiphar's house, that could have been a final. But it did not lose focus. We pursue our goal, maybe if we have one, our dream 
at the point that we even miss, we even lose or uh, we lost in the midst of <laughs> crowd of when little difficulty comes. We forget that. We forgot that we had a dream or we were going somewhere. If you have that kind of dream, nobody will take it from you. People dream to be a what? Doctors. Eh? What is your dream? What is your dream? I come to ask. Can someone sit beside these two people? Brother John. Can you touch your brother? Can you wake him up? can go behind <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. <laughs> what do you want to be? What do you really want to be? What you want to be is your dream. Amen? Amen. It's your dream. It's not the one that you close your eyes and then you start seeing that it can be a nightmare. Something that cannot be achievable. That is not achievable. You can be telling somebody, oh, I will be doing this. I will do that. I want to be. I will be this. I will be that. I will be that. But it's looking at your life. You, you are not disciplined. There's no discipline. And then you say, I'm going to be a, a prime minister. You, a prime minister in which country? <laughs> Not in this one. <laughs> Not in this one. That's right, Janet. <laughs> if you want to be a director, a manager, a, a housewife, a, a good husband, you start to behave like a good husband. You start to dress like a housewife. <laughs> there's a street wife, there's a housewife. A street, can they call those ones street wife? <laughs> street wife. When you see, you say, I want to get married. Question to shut up. So my question to us this morning, mm -hmm. what do you want to be? We saw in our Bible study, we saw on our, in our Bible study that God wants to equip us to become something. Yes. Do you want to be a pastor? Mm -hmm. You can be a pastor. It can be your dream. Do you want to be a prophet? You can be a prophet. It can be your dream. Mm -hmm. Do you want to be a doctor, a nurse, an administrator? Everything is there for you to succeed, to achieve, to become what you want. That's why some parents spend more money to send their sibling, their child abroad, put them in the best school. Because they have a dream. For that child. But if your parents have a dream for you and you, you are sleeping. Like mama and I, we have a dream for most of you. But we don't know if you realize that you have a dream. <laughs> the second thing I want to tell you, let me put it as a question. Can two dream or two dreamers work together. Can we put two, we say merge. Can we merge to another dream? The answer is yes. The answer is what? Yes. Disciples, they were working together. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear that Paul and John were fighting.
Amen. I will come back to this. This is just to open our eyes. Because when you read Acts chapter 17, verse 6, Acts chapter 17, verse 6, Acts 17, 6. Acts 17, 6. Yes. It reads, Not finding them there, they dragged out Jason and some of other believers instead and took them before the city council. Paul and Silas have caused trouble all over the world, they shouted. And now they are here disturbing our city. Beloved, to be for a dream to be a a big dream, we have to bring more people together into the dream. They say teamwork make a dream work. Mm -hmm. Are you part of the team? Yes. And when you are part of the team, you have to know the goal of the team. That means the vision of the team. The mission of the team. Because the mission is what makes us to accomplish the vision. Amen? Amen. You have to be part of the team. In that, in that passage you just read, it said J Jason and all the believers, they were together. And then the, sant the, the, the centurion, the centurion, they said, these people, they're going to turn the city upside down. They have turned the world upside down. So when we come together, we achieve more. Hallelujah. When we come together, we do what? We achieve more. That's why in the conventional society, in the conventional society, they do what they call fusion, networking. Why two bands come together? Is to be a great organization, mm -hmm. not to compete with anyone. So if all of us, with the dream we have, with the goal we have, we come together, no one can resist when we go out. Amen. 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 We are where we are just because few people understand the dream. Few people understand the vision. Few people embrace, merge to the vision. The merge to the vision. Just few. Because when you come into the vision, you are bound by the rules. You don't come and do your own thing. But you come and for the vision to be fulfilled. Hmm? When KLM and uh, KLM mix with who? With Air France. They mix because they did not want any other company to compete with them. They want to get. So KLM doesn't come and still be KLM. And Air France will, not, will cease to be CL, uh, Air France. But they will be working to gain all the customers. So when you come into a vision, your dream is for that vision to stand and to expand. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Be a dreamer. Amen. Be a dreamer. Amen. I said be a dreamer. Amen. A dreamer. Amen. Yes. With your eyes open, not, oh. not wide sleeping. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Now we're going to clap for Jesus. That's why Jesus, Jesus did not lose.
lose focus. Yes. Never. When they try to make it focus, I'm in the house of my father. Amen. Don't you know that I come to do the will of my father? Oh yes. That is the vision. They come together. Yes. The Holy Spirit together. They try to distract it. I say no. What I come to do is not my will, but His will. Amen. And he gather his disciples around the what? The temple. Matthew 26. In Matthew 26. Verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened living bread, the disciple came to Jesus and asked, where do we go? Where do you want us to prepare? Please stop that. Where do you want us to spend Passover. Where do you want us to do the The disciple asks, Where do you want us to spend Passover? I'm asking you, where do you want us to? To partake. Because the, the Passover was a feast. Unleavened bread. A bread without peace. Jesus. Jesus said, as you go into the city, they told them you will see a certain man. Send him. The teacher said, my time has come, and I will eat the Passover meal with my disciple at your house. At your house. I'm coming back to the word of Jesus. Don't you know I have to be in my father's house? Amen? Amen. Because in his father's house, beloved, there is a fullness of joy. Mm -hmm. There is a feast Amen. that is going on in his house. Amen. When you come into the house of God, you have to consider yourself being in the house of your father. Amen. That whatsoever is happening in the house of your father, you don't stay a stranger. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are Visit us in the house of our father, which is no good. We're supposed to be fully attendant. Fully attendant. Whatever is happening, you have to be part of it. That's why we don't exclude anyone that crossed that door. Because it's not the house of Apostle Delphin or Pastor Daniel. It's the house of our father. We become a member of one family. Amen. And the Bible says, as they were eating, Jesus took a lot of bread and asked God blessing. Amen. As they were eating, Jesus took a bread. That means they were a special bread on that table. Mm -hmm. Ask God for blessing. And he said he broke it and gave to them. Take. Take it and eat. For this is my body. Amen. Amen. It is represent the body of Christ. What he did that day. He said we should continue doing it. Until he returned. He gave us the mandate mm. to do it on his behalf. Mm. Because he's omnipresent, we know that he's here. Mm. 
with us. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to give thanks to God for this bread as he did. And then we're going to break it and we're going to take it as part of his body. And he said each time you take it, it brings healing into your body. Father, we thank you for this bread. We thank you for the flour that has been used. We thank you for the ingredients that have been used. Father, sanctify it and let it represent that body that was broken for us, that justify us, that usher us into your presence. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you, Lord. Can someone be singing? Oh, Then the 
sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. What a powerful word. We give thanks to God. Amen. Thank God for this juice. He called it wine. Amen. Hallelujah. Because it was coming from the grave. Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time that you brought us into your presence. And sat us around your table. Father, we thank you for the blood that you pour out and seal the covenant with your father. And not only seal the covenant, but cleanse our sin. Father, we thank you. No condemnation for those that are in Christ Jesus. And he said, if you ask for forgiveness, it's just to forgive you. Father, we thank you for all righteousness. Amen. Amen. He is our righteousness. Amen. Jesus is our righteousness. Jesus the righteous. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, as you pass this blood, just let him be your blood, O Lord, that your people are taking in Jesus' name.
if someone lifts his hands, she will come and give envelope. Amen. Amen. Give and it shall be given unto you. Amen. Amen. I love that word. Give and it shall be given unto you. Give me a, a pen. Give pen to those that doesn't have pen. Leave her. Leave her. A hand is here. Good measure. Don't expect good measure when he doesn't give in good measure. <laughs> because the Bible says that we use the that we use the measurement that you use to give to you. He said, press down, shake it together, and it will run over. Amen. Amen. We want to gain on time. So write your envelope, write your name. If you see the post, I said this is 183 days in 2021. 100 and what? 83 days. And it remains 183 days for 2021 to finish. So we are in the right middle mm -hmm. of the year. Can you imagine? Mm -hmm. What a privilege to be alive. Mm -hmm. What a privilege to enjoy. I know they were, they were upside down. Upside down. But that upside down did not bury you. Mm -hmm. Hmm? We did not bury you, so you are still alive. We are still alive. So you have to make up your mind that the remaining 183 days I have to use it usefully. I don't want to waste it. Amen? I don't want anybody to distract me from using it wisely. Father, we thank you. If you have completed your envelope, beloved, this is the time. Today is 26, 27, yeah? Mm. Don't forget. But Supreme, do you put on the board? Yes. There are those that are faithfully with the bank. Mm. Yes. They, they, they are bankers. <laughs> Amen? But even though you put you are tied and offering in the bank, you still have to put in the envelope. Mm -hmm. You still have to fill the envelope. Amen? Amen. 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 That's for a good accountability. Mm. A good accountability. May God bless all what we have bringing into his house as a seed. Mm -hmm. It's a seed and God said you are sowing in a fertile ground. I pray that God will multiply and replenish. It will rebuild the devourer mm. when we are faithful. Mm. You will not be losing your money. Mm. You will not no. be losing. No way. And your business will flourish. Amen. Your business will flourish mm. in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Because when God opened the windows of heaven, when it's raining from heaven, oh my God, things will grow. Mm. Amen. Amen. Rainy me, rainy me, a little fire. Rainy me, rainy me, rainy me, rainy me, Lord. Rainy me, a little fire, a little fire. Rainy me. 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 Rainy
are you to rejoice? Pastor Prince, let us go and dance. Hey! <laughs> we need to dance, so.
This is our healing service, healing message. Amen? Amen. So prepare your heart to receive Amen. Your, yeah. the word. <laughs> yes, in our introduction prayer, Apostle said we cannot receive if we doesn't empty ourselves. Mm -hmm. So when you are empty, they can fill you up. Amen. 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 So I believe that we are empty and we need to be fed, to be filled. Yeah. Uh -huh. We need to be filled. Amen. Yes, even to be fed. Amen. Yeah. We want to eat. Yeah, amen. amen. When you come around the that goes to Samuria. You see, that is the beginning of yeah. progress. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. So, without wasting time, we invite Apostle to give us the message that the Lord has given her tonight. Amen. Or... Hallelujah. <laughs> tonight. Tonight. Yes. Give her that microphone. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Amen. be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We used to lodge one man of God in Cameroon. We used to come from Nigeria and to our local church. We always sing this song that I love. <laughs> Amen. And that song is so nice. It's so powerful. He said he was the tallest man because he was very short. He was just like uh, my, 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 my daughter, uh, Mary Love, shot man, but the power of God was on him. And you always sing this song, Jesus owns the land, my papa owns the land, no place for demon to pay, my papa owns the land. you are lodging in your house. 
is needing a special anointing in your life to carry on with the vision. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So as today is our healing service, oh yes, we want to pray that if something has been holding your life, God was talking to me as all the time because my husband said, have you prepared? I said, I prepare my message every day. Hallelujah. I don't prepare when I'm coming to church that day. No, I prepare it every time in my spirit. I prepare, I pray, I prepare, I pray. And the Holy Spirit, I speak with God. I speak with the Holy Spirit in so many things because I want my life to change. I don't know about you. But me, I want my life to change. I don't want to be in the same place anymore. Hallelujah. I want my life to change. I want my life to be transformed. You welcome my vision. You welcome my this what transform me. Chaque fois, je demande à Dieu de transformer ma vie, de changer ma vie. Because you need to know your life. You need to know what you need. You need to know what is holding you. You need to know it. Yes. No person can tell me that I don't know what is disturbing me. I don't know. No, you know what is holding. Because if you don't know what is holding you, it means you are in the gang of the enemy. So the enemy has blinded you not to know. But when God opened your eyes, I want to talk about the anointing to heal. And this said, uh, God, God must open our eyes. So if we don't know ourselves, we will not move forward. We will not do the work of God. Beloved, my life is a living testimony. Father, I pray that today will be a, a day that you want to touch somebody's life. You want to transform my life. In the name of Jesus, Jesus, you want me, hallelujah, to speak, hallelujah, what you have done by healing, opening my eyes, hallelujah, for me to see where you are taking me, in the mighty name of Jesus. Open the eyes of your children, open the eyes of my brothers and sisters, open our eyes so that we can see where you are taking us, and we will not settle in the little thing, we will not settle in the small things, pray, in the pray. mighty name of Jesus. Father, our dream must be big. I don't know. Papa was just saying, I said, ah, where did he get this my this goal? Because I don't want him to preach my message. <laughs> but I thank God that the other day was preaching with Pastor Pastor Prosper. The same thing. They were not together, but they preached the same thing. So it means the Holy Spirit is in our midst. Amen. When we are moving together, when we have the same dream together, you can be in your house and God will speak to you the same thing I'm gonna say here. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you. So I pray that the Holy Spirit, even though we are few, I want to say the angels of God are here. Yes. Hallelujah. The angels of God, in the Bible says when two or three are gathered, mm. when they are gathered in the presence of God, God say, I am with you. Why did God say two or three? What did he not say when thousand are gathered? He said two or three. Hallelujah. He said, I will be in your midst. I will do marvelous things. Hallelujah. That's a miracle. For God to take care of the little things, little one. Hallelujah. So today we are talking about healing and deliverance. And my message is that anointed to heal. I love too much about healing. Physical healing is very good. Hallelujah. Everybody wants physical healing. Jesus was healing people that were not just, they were not believers. People were coming, crowd, they were coming to him. The Bible said they were bringing many people, blind people, lame people, crippled, and he was healing all of them. He didn't ask them, do you receive, are, are you a child of God? Are you this? He never asked them, he just healed all of them. And the Bible says, but when he was leaving, he left 500 disciples. But when he left, he told them to go to the upper room. Just 120 obeyed to go to the upper room. Hallelujah. It's the same thing today. Hallelujah. Few people will carry on with the vision. Few, just few, just few. When we were in the Bible college, we were more than 2,000. But I can tell you, we are just few that are carrying on with the just maybe not up to 10 that we are moving with the vision of the kingdom. But the way we were there, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, everybody was excited. Yeah, I'm going on mission. I'm going, I'm going. Everyone was so much excited to carry on with the work of God. But as we left there, every person just packed. Go down. It is what you want to do in the Lord that God will use you. It is what no person will say, What do you want me to do? What do you nobody will tell? I will say my husband that I will not beg no person to serve God. All I have to tell you is to encourage you. Hallelujah. Because when you keep on encouraging people that don't want to go forward and you begin to go backward with them, you will not achieve your goal. You will not achieve your dream. And this is what about God Jesus was talking about the anointing 
to him. And when he was moving forward, people that their eyes were open, they were bringing people to him so that he may heal them all. Hallelujah. Isaiah, the book of Isaiah 42 is telling us, is telling us that it's only you know what you want God to do in your life, in your generation. I will not die and go to grave without achieving what God has asked me where I was born for. No. I told the Lord and I'm praying every day. I'm asking God that this is my goal. This is what I want to do. And it's not about me. It's about you. I don't want to, to say I want to be known like a good preacher. No, no. There's something that I'm asking God that I want to do it in my country and other country. And then this is what I want to do for the glory of God. This is what Isaiah, the book of Isaiah says. Isaiah 6 and 42 from verse 18. The Bible says, I want to talk about eyes open. Hear ye deaf and look ye blind, that ye may see. Sometimes we are in the church, we don't hear. We don't see. I'm not talking about physical, seeing this is black and white. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about spiritual sight. I'm talking about spiritual hearing. He said, Hear ye deaf and look, ye may ye blind, that ye may see. I mean, God saw many of the people that they were not seeing what he was about to do in their life. And he focused about spiritual deafness and spiritual blindness. That's what the Lord was trying to tell us. He said, Who is blind but my servant or dead but my messenger that I sent? Who is blind as he is in perfect and blind as the Lord's servant? He said we have to pray that God should open our eyes so we may see. Hallelujah. You can be in the church for 20 years, for 50 years, for 100 years, and you have not achieved one thing that someone can remember you. That is not good. That's not fair. It means when we are blind, we don't see the vision of the kingdom. We don't even see that I need to see. Every day we have to pay because of what I was speaking to one of my friends yesterday from Cameroon. I said, you know, the, the most important thing for us is to see. If we can see, we're not going to be doing what we are doing. I'm not neg neglecting Janet or that little girl. Because I'm seeing beyond what God wants to do. Hallelujah. You may be sitting beside a, a millionaire in a church. But because you cannot see spiritually, you neglect and neglect that person. So the Bible is talking about that we may see. You see? The Bible says when Isaiah died, that's why Isaiah began to see. See spiritual things. Most of us left opportunity to bypass us because we can't see. We don't see. But I love Jesus. In Matthew, he said they were bringing people for him to heal them and blind people for him to make their eyes see. This was physical sight. Physical sight for us to see. But that spiritual sight is when the Holy Spirit in is, is in us and then we cannot see what the Lord wants to do in our life. I always say I didn't come to this. I didn't even have a plan to come to Europe. Never. It wasn't even my vision to come to Europe. It was not my vision. And people around me, my pastor, my spiritual mother, they'll say, your mission is not in this country. That's what are you people talking about? Who told I want to live here? But I was, we're traveling. But our vision was not to come and do the work of God in Europe. But the Lord began to speak to people around me, to my spiritual fathers, my, my mentor, my spiritual mother, telling me they were seeing dreams about me, which I was not yet saying. But all I need to do is to align and pray. But the way the Lord moves, and moves in a miraculous way. Why? Because where I was, I was okay. Money was not my problem. Money was not our problem. A day, my husband and I were selling three million francs. 
our business. Just a day. When we don't sell, it was three million. When we don't sell our products, it was three million. So it wasn't about leaving my country to come here to look for money. I got spiritual children, they know. Hallelujah. It was about when God wants to shift you to do something for his life. To do something for his kingdom. He began to use you. When the Lord began to use me in the healing ministry, I began to focus on that healing ministry. I began to do the things that God wants me to do. And I say, I'm not opening with my own mouth. So we are not opening our office when we are going to church. When we have a, a delivery service or we have Bible studies. Even though you are coming from what kind of city from Cameroon that you paid a lot of money to come and meet us. You say, this is my money. I want that product. We say, come tomorrow because we are going to church. It was our priority. And God began to use me powerfully before he, before he when he believed, he became a baby Christian. So I have to take care of him. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And then the Lord began to use me in it, by his grace, began to use me. Which was under my calling, take me to the hospital early in the morning around 5 o'clock because they called me to come and, uh, uh, and, and pray for the sick, to come and pray for this. He said, wait for tomorrow. I said, no, I will go. I will take the car, I will go to the hospital to pray for people. I don't know about you. I don't know what God wants to do in your life. I don't know what God wants to do with you. I don't know how you are seeing the mission, the mission of the kingdom. It's not about money, beloved. It's not about money. It's about this anointing to heal is more than gold or silver. It is so joyful. I think the man of God that is saying knows what I'm saying. You are very happy to do what God is asking you to do when you began to operate in that supernatural realm, when you began to see what God wants to do in your life. Lord, open my eyes so that I may see. I want you to pray that prayer. Father, open my eyes so that I may see what you are sending me. So that I may see the way, so that I will not be diverted to do your work. So that I will not be diverted, oh Lord. Father, open my eyes so that I may see. Open my eyes to see, to see, to see. Hallelujah. To see. That's what the, the, that the, the, the Bible says. So, so that they may see. Seeing is very important. The Bible says, in the book of Matthew, he said the blind receive their, their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And, and blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. The blind receive their eyes. They receive their sight. This is physical. But now, do they receive spiritual sight? We can see. You know, the devil will come and blind us. When we, see, when we are preaching the gospel and then somebody, somebody told me yesterday in the city center, he said, you cannot convert me. You cannot convince me. You cannot tell me anything. You, it will take you too long to go. I say, I'm not the one who is convincing you. I'm not even, I'm not even worthy to convince you. But there is someone greater that you and I, that will convince you. You say, eh? Who is that person? Okay, I know I'm going to take my cup of tea with my friends. Give me the flyer. I will read it and I will get back to you. Because he understood. Because when you are speaking to people about the gospel, you don't need to be intimidated. Hallelujah. You don't need to be feeling as if you don't know who you are going, the person you are representing. It's the same thing when we are talking about people seeing in the spirit, we are sure of what we are telling them. When we say you are blind, even though you are seeing, you say, ah, but I can you say I'm blind, but I can see you. No. Blindness, spiritual blindness is very, very serious, beloved. And this spiritual blindness is in the hands of the Lord. Many Christians, most of us that we say we are born again, we are not seeing nothing. Nothing. I guarantee. Men, most of us doesn't see. We don't see. How? Because if you are not moved by the power of the Holy Spirit to do the things that God is asking you to do, you 
you are blind. If something doesn't motivate you into do the things of God and say that, as Papa was saying about dream, you carry on with your dream that the Lord has put in you. That this is what God has, my man of God, I, I, my church, my this. That is a dream that the Lord has put in. He's carrying with that dream. If something cannot move you to do the things of the Lord, I'm telling you that's blindness. That is pure blindness. There's no other blindness than to be blind, not to do the things of God. I think that's the, that's what we need to pray every day that God open our eyes to see what I can do. When we came to UK, I pray my husband first of all came and then I just came to visit. I said I was not it wasn't even in my mind to come. And immediately I landed in that church, just my first move. The pastor made me to be a house fellowship leader. Just my first move. Just my commitment, my discipline. He said, you are a house fellowship leader. I said, no, but I'm going back to Africa. He said, no, you are a house fellowship leader. You are an Englishman. So because when you are in the church and you are not taking the things of that church serious, you are blind. Yeah. If you are not taking the things of the ministry where you are, I'm not talking here. Wherever you are, you are watching me. Wherever you are, you are watching me, and then you don't take, I'm not talking about fortune, I'm talking about general. You don't take the things of God serious wherever you are, you are blind. And so that's why God told me that you have to talk about them to see. My people are not seeing what I'm about to do in their generation. What are they still continue to talk about Mother Theresa? She was a mother in Catholic Church. But her name would never be written off in the book throughout. Yeah, sure. Never. The name of Mother Teresa would never, never come out from any place. Everyone is talking about her. I'm talking, I didn't, I didn't know her. Because of the work that she was doing in the kingdom, God opened her eyes to see what she ought to do. Hallelujah. I pray that may the Lord open your eyes to see if you are really a believer, a child of God, born and washed by the Spirit, by the blood of Jesus, that will not waste our time, waste our generation, moving up and down, doing nothing. Then bring many people. The first thing that Jesus prayed, that receive your sight. Because if you receive your sight, you will know the direction of where you are going. You know, in the ministry, We've come to see some that people don't want to do. They say it's Pastor Devin, it's Pastor this, it's Pastor that. It's when you have that mentality, you are not seen. I'm telling you, when we move to another church in Coventry, the Pastor Marcos. Cleaning the church is not, it's not now. It's not now that I began to do those things. It's, it's a lifestyle. Doing my post work, I'm doing anywhere that I go. Not here that I'm doing. Everywhere, any church that I step my foot, the first one they say, I'm bringing something. I'm bring, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. Seeing must be a lifestyle. You must be serving God, it must be your lifestyle. And that's why many of us will need, first of all, to be delivered from blindness, spiritual blindness and spiritual deafness. So that when the Lord opens our eyes to see, you know, the devil, what the devil wants to do to us is to blind us so that we will not achieve the purpose of which God has called us to do. So that opportunity will come and pass. Sure. Come and pass. But because we are blind, we will not see it. Sometimes I always talk to myself, say, you know, when we went to war, maybe we went to war only for one or two people. Just for one or two people. We can't even know. But because when God sent you to a place, you need to know why. And through them, the door is open. Beloved, we should not take the thing. Jesus was moving and blessing people, healing the sick. In Mark chapter 8, 8, he said he was healing the sick. Not because, because he wanted them to be healthy. You cannot go some religion they say no, it's for me to seek until when I go to heaven, I will be here. So if you are sick here until you wait to go to heaven, it means the work of God will be crippled. We can't carry on with the work of God. 
We need to be whole to see where God is sending us. To do the things of God. Most of us need deliverance. Our eyes need to be open. Our ears need to be attentive. We need to see every opportunity. If I'm with you, you don't see that I'm a fountain of blessing. I am. Hallelujah. Amen. That you are a fountain. My brother is a fountain. Because we are children of God, we are fountain of life. Yeah. When we are children of God, we are fountain of blessing. So when I'm with my sister, with my daddy, mother, I'm with you, I know you are a fountain. There is something that I will be blessed through you. But I need to see it. I need to see it. There is something in each and every one of us. But we need spiritual eyes. We need spiritual eyes to see. Hallelujah. And I thank God. Because God has opened our eyes to be doing what he asked us to do. No one will come and see in your place. You have to pray that God open my eyes. And that's why Jesus Christ in the book of John chapter 9. He healed this blind man. Because in those days when you were blind, it means that you have sinned. It means that your parents have sinned. It means that someone or your father has sinned. But the Jesus was passing and he saw this man which was blind from birth. But when we were blind from birth because we do not know Christ, and now Christ has come to give us life so that we may see, we began to walk like blind people. We need some supernatural people. You know, some people do things because they are scared of someone or they want a favor of somebody or they, are, they, they, they want someone. I don't understand. They want somebody different. If I cannot respect the man of God that I'm seeing every day and I will be respecting some men of God on the TV that I don't even know them. I cannot even go near them. I need a protocol, I need a this thing. I need to respect him and cook for him. Bless him. So that when you people don't know how to tap blessing. You don't know how to tap blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when he's eating the food and he's drinking, he's praying for me. He's speaking in his even though he doesn't speak in his mouth, his spirit. His spirit is praying because he was hungry. The other day I invited man of God to go and say, oh. as he was eating, I was blessed. I was blessed that week. Amen. Seriously, not joke. Ask Papa. Serious blessing. When we tap blessing, when we can see, we see what the Lord is doing or what God wants to do in our life. That's why we have to pray every day. Lord, open my eyes every day so that I, any no opportunity may bypass me, Lord. Open my eyes. This man was blind. But Jesus was coming. He said, but where is this man? The disciple asked him, where is this man blind? Has he seen? No. I'm blind. Am I not a child of God? You are. Have I not received Jesus Christ? You have received Jesus Christ. But yet, you are blind. Jesus said, I must, and this man must see. He just put, he, he took the clay. He, took, he said, when he had spoken, he spat onto the ground and made clear of the spirit and he anointed, anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. And he said unto him, go, ask yourself, blind man, and then more to that, add the clay again in the side. Means, and then you tell the man, go. Where am I going? When I read it, he said, go. Blind man is already blind. And then you spit in the floor, in the ground. You took again another clay and put again in his eyes. My God. And then you say, go. <laughs> Where am I going? And the man, he said, go. Watch in the pool of Siloam. My God. We need some that stick that is showing us the road. Where am I going? I'm blind. The guy did not ask no question. I'm already blind, master. And you are putting another clay in my eyes. To where am I going? I need someone to help me so that I can go into that, uh, that pool of silo. I need someone to help me to go there. He didn't ask. But the spirit was seen. The spirit was seen. Hallelujah. And then he arrived at that place and he washed his eyes. You know, of 
listening to the voice of God and doing what God has asked us is the key. He, he did what the Lord told him. He said, go. And I, that's the same thing the Lord is telling you and I, go. Go. If we can see what is in the city with our spiritual eyes, we will not see where we are. And the guy went as his eye and he went and washed his eye, hallelujah, and he went away therefore and washed and came and became seen. I pray that the clay that Jesus will put in our eyes today, we will go and watch it and will become what we see in the name of Jesus. That we began to see what God wants us to see. And when the man began to see, the neighbor was surprised. Hallelujah. Anytime Jesus touches your life, anytime you began to see, your life will begin to be supernatural. You began to do things that people don't understand. The Bible said the neighbor therefore and which has seen him and he was blind and said, is it not this man? I pray that your life will change. They will say, is it not this woman? Is it not this man? Why is he speaking boldly? Did this man was blind? He said, yes, I was blind. He didn't refuse. He said, yes, I was blind. But how do you come to see them? It's a man that put clay in my eyes. He said, go. You need revelation. Hallelujah. I say, God, open my eyes to have a revelation. Open my eyes so that I may have a revelation. When Jesus removed, put the clay in your spiritual eyes and ask you to go. And when you go, hallelujah, you began to see. And this man began to do supernatural things. Hallelujah. He began to go even to the place that they didn't want to see him and began to speak about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When you see, you began to speak about Jesus wherever you go. Even the parents rejected him. Oh, he's grown up. He can speak on himself. Oh, we don't know how he managed to see. You know, when you receive, when you receive Jesus Christ, your life changed the way you do things. Your life changed. Your parents. My father used to come to my house and tell me, this thing of hallelujah, hallelujah, that you've gone to enter. You were born Catholic. Now it's only hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah in your house. What is all this? Only hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. But at the end, he became, he started to speak hallelujah. Yeah. He himself began to speak hallelujah. Yeah. All of them began to speak hallelujah. Yeah. Because their eyes, they began to see that my life has changed. That the things I was saying, no more discrimination, no more racism, no more jealousy, no more competition. When you began to see, you began to do supernatural things. You know, say, this is my tribe. This is my God. This is my country. Oh, no, no. You began to see things in a different way. I used to tell my husband, I said, God did not call me for Cameroonians. God called me to go and preach to the nations. Hallelujah. So we are to preach to the nation, not to Africa, to the nations. Amen. When we leave me, when we see that in the kingdom, God began to open the door for us. Oh, she, she can't speak good English. No, I can't speak in good English. Yes, that's fine. But the heavenly English, you will hear. Because your ears will be open. Hallelujah. You will hear. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. God wants us to see. The Lord wants us to see. Spirit, spiritual sight will open our eyes to everything. The light of God will shine all over. Hallelujah. The light of God will shine all over us when we began to see what God wants us to see. We began to do what the Lord wants us to do. Our eyes will be open. We will not be remain in that same place going round and round, round and round, round and round. Another man oh, say, Lord, open my eyes, let me see. But you may say, no, I want to see. Jesus said, what can I do for you? He said, I just want to see. I think that's what most of us need. We just want to see. When we see, we will not complicate the word of God. We will not complicate many things. We will not be simple. And just carry on with what God has asked us to do. We will not complicate. When we began to see what the Lord wants us to do, we are not going to complicate. Glory be to God. We began to do what the Lord asked. Where are we complicating the work of God? Where are we choosing? Is this person that will speak to me before I can hear? If this one speak, I won't even obey. This one speak, I won't obey. If the next speak to me, I will obey. If I speak, I won't obey. Because we don't see. That's how we are doing in the kingdom. Until this person speak to me, I will respect, I will obey. This one speak to me, I will obey. But this other one speak to me, I won't obey. We are all children of God because we don't see. We don't
not see. We are blind. But when we are blind, we need help. Say, I need help. I need help. I need help. Any opportunity that comes our way, we need to use it. Hallelujah. We need to use it. We need to use it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Look, I will end with this one. There's a lot of verses about opening eyes. Luke chapter 18, verse 35. It says, And it came to pass that it was come night unto Jericho. A certain blind man sat by the wayside begging. Begging. And hearing the multitude passing by. And he asked, what is it mean? And they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by. And he cried, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This type of sight need the mercy of God. And they went therefore and rebuked him and said, and told him, hold your peace. But he cried so much, the more that son of David have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. I need the mercy of God for me to see clear. I want to do the work of God, but I am blind. I want to do, and Jesus, this child, the cry, this cry is from his spirit. Jesus said, bring him for me. Bring that man to me. And they brought Bartimaeus to him. And Jesus touched his eye. And he received his sight. Hallelujah. He began to follow Jesus. Beloved, if you have come here today, if we are even one or two, we are here. Let's pray that God will open our eyes to receive the sign in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We bless you for what you are doing. Open. Let's pray that the Lord will open our eyes so that we can see clearly the vision of the kingdom that is written in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That is my cry every day. That Lord, open my eyes to see what is written in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Hallelujah. That we're not going to be confused. Hallelujah. Father, open, open our eyes. Put your hands and say, Lord, my spiritual eyes is blind. I cannot see clearly you made the vision that you've shown me five years ago, ten years ago. But today, Lord, open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual eyes. Open my spiritual eyes. Anoint my eyes so that I may see in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We can do better than that. We can do better than that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yes, we want to see. There is a song that says, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Yeah. Yeah. And by fly across this land. That only my Savior knows I know. He is the way to heaven. Amen. Amen. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That's it, amen. If it's your prayer, stand on your feet. Stand on your feet, stand on your feet. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of the, the eyes of our heart. There is another eyes in the heart. Open the eyes of my heart. Hallelujah. Open the eyes of my heart. Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Use your own words. 
If you speak in your language, your mother tongue, yes. say, Lord, I want to see. Yes. Amen. I really want to see. I want to see. Yes. I want to see the direction. I want to see the direction, Lord. I want to see your calling in my life. Yes. Yes. Amen. I want to see your most important thing. The most important thing is not to gain the whole world and no. lose our life. Yes. You see, what shall it profit to a man? To gain the whole world. You see the direction of your work place. You see the direction of your house, but you don't see the direction of the house of your father. House of God. You don't see the direction. No, may God open our spiritual eyes to see. In Jesus' name. Amen. The enemy will not continue to be blinding us. We want to see. We really want to see. Want to see, want to see Lord. I want to see. Really want to see. Every day. May God bless you. Amen. That make your way to this place. Amen. Now we're going to go into something very important. I think some people, I thank God. I use this microphone to thank those that have brought me present on my birth, for my birthday. Those that send me messages. Yes. I receive a lot of message, messages on my phone. Amen. And I promise, Levi, there is a phone on my table. Bring it for me. Hallelujah. Many, many messages. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all those that you take time to write to me. Amen. I value it. There are some people that start early morning. There are some people that come in at 12. There are some people that come in the afternoon. There are some people even before midnight when the day was finishing. I thank God for Jesus that gave us this illustration. Hey, Pastor. That those that come for the first hour and those that come to the last hour, they are all the same. If not, I could have shot some people down. <laughs> How can you wait for the last minute to wish me my happy birthday? Yes, you receive it. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> he said, for the first hour to the last hour, Amen. we are the same. But the one that pleases me is those that took time to sing for me. And one of the one of the people that sang for me is my pastor from Cameroon. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Yes. That pleases me. I promise her that I will sing it. I will let the church listen to it. Oh, okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
So, if individually you want my bank account, just write to me. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm waiting for my mommy to rocket me into the moon next week. Uh, next birthday. You know what they say to that, Daniel, when someone forgets your birthday? <clears throat> And they can send you something later. Oh, yes! It's better late than never. Better <laughs> than never. never. Yes! Yay. Amen. Can we share the grace? Let us share the grace. Another saying, when someone asks you how old you are, yeah. you turn around and say to them, you're as young as your, te your tongue, but as old as your teeth. Yes. Amen! <laughs> that is the word of wisdom. Clap for Jesus. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We... Oh, this is a history book. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and the love of God, God and the sweet Amen. fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. And may God bless the food that we're going to eat. May God bless everything that we're going to eat in Jesus' name. A lot of food, a lot of food. Mama, she always believed that the Lord, the angels, are eating with us. So when she's cooking, she doesn't see the numbers. So God bless you. 